I recently made a hot end insert that increased the melt rate of my volcano by 50% over the CH2 nozzle alone, without increasing the length by even a millimeter. In this video, I'll show you how I made my prototype. I started this project because I wanted to find a way to increase the melt rate without making my hot end so long it became overly fragile, heavy, or impossible to compensate for with pressure advance. I didn't want to run prints any hotter than my typical PLA settings of 210 to 215 degrees Celsius because it starts to affect bridging in my experience and can burn the filament that gets stuck to the nozzle. The CHT was the first major improvement in this area, making a standard length melt zone equivalent to a volcano. Before long spacers were made to put a CHT nozzle into a volcano heater block than a full volcano CHT. Unfortunately, a longer CHT nozzle can only improve so much, as shown by Stefan from CNC Kitchen, link to his video below in the description. At some point unsoftened plastic starts hitting the face of the CHT, and eventually the extruder can't keep up and it chokes not on the nozzle but on the CHT face. Instead of a straight bore or a sudden split, my idea was to gradually wedge the filament into a split shape, melting closer to the core as it goes. Since I shared my last video in January, it looks like FL Sun has done something similar with a Boswell nozzle style geometry. Again, link to Lost in Text video in the description. So let me show you how I made mine so you can make your own. I started with a copper bolt and a 3D printed part to keep the bolt centered in the drill press and sanded the tip down as flat as possible to avoid filament leakage later. I'm using a poor man's drill press, so someone with real tools should have no issues doing this better. You can see how shiny and smooth it turned out. I sanded off the edge so the thread wouldn't turn into a burr and cause issues later on. Next, I mounted the bolt in a 3D printed clamp so it would stay still and upright while I was drilling into it. And I used a 0.7mm PCB drill. You can get a pack of these for real cheap. It took some time to align, and in the end I didn't get the hole quite right since the press is a bit flexible, but it was close enough for testing. I used a CNC bit to create the cone shape. Again, a pack is only a few dollars. I think it only cost me five. In a normal nozzle, the filament has just a bit of wiggle room, which I tried to replicate here. A little too small, but best to work up to the right size. Now the filament just wobbles in the top, but doesn't slide down too freely. It looks more off-center than it really is because of the threads wrapping around, but it is just a little off-center. I 3D printed another little part to measure and hold the screw while I've cut the part off we need. And I added a grub screw so it wouldn't slide around while we're cutting. Now it's got a burr from cutting it off, better to smooth that out. Once again, I made a 3D printed holder. I couldn't get it all the way in by hand, but that's okay because I'm using a drill press. It'll press it down into place. Just like that. It looks like I'm trimming down the end of my drill press in the sandpaper, but it actually did stick out by about a half a millimeter, you can see right here. Much better. Look how flat that is. Unfortunately, it is a one-time use. I had to get it out with a blowtorch, but it's very little plastic, so it's fine. Almost ready. Now back in the 3D printed holder to cut the slots. I took a $10 jeweler saw from Amazon to it to create the X shape. It makes it jagged, a little bit of an uneven hole, but it is a prototype and I don't have better tools to do this myself. If one of you proper machinists know how to do this, please let me know. I saw an Instagram video where someone used an old cloth to prevent chatter, and it turns out it totally works on small parts of the paper towel. For some reason my iPad started resonating right here. And yes, this is recorded on an iPad before I realized I could turn on 4K video. I probably chamfered the face a little too deep, but again, it's a prototype, so it's fine. I resawed the slots after drilling to clear them out. And I cleaned them with a syringe filled with alcohol. Super useful tool to have around. 
You can see the extra notches I had to cut out here since the slots were a little bit too small. Finally, I hammered the bit in to make sure it fit just right. Came up about 0.6 millimeters short, but it works fine. And there's the spacer. Now let's talk about possible setups. First off is the regular setup. This is the same length as the volcano, replacing the normal spacer with a booster. Now, if anyone knows what this bit is called, I'd love it if you'd leave a comment. I have no idea. It kind of looks like a fillet, but it's flat on one face, and it's kind of skinnier on the edges. I'll use a cheap CHT nozzle since I don't have $20 to spend on a Bontech nozzle. And here it is, standard length 26 millimeters. This is the only one I'll be using in these tests. The second setup is a spacer with a Volcano CHT. Again, I'm using a knockoff, but I'd love to run these tests with a genuine Bontech Volcano CHT. I'm calling this length the Volcano Plus, since it's about 9mm longer than the Volcano. I still have this initial janky prototype that I cut too short, but decided to add in to show what it would look like if you made a longer booster. Adding that in puts the Volcano block right at about at its limit, maybe a little bit past it. That puts us at 40 millimeters, about the same length as the Dragon Pro if I'm not mistaken. Now let's do some flow tests. I love that puff of smoke so much. Just to see what the filament looks like when it first comes through the booster, here's an extrusion without the nozzle. We need to come up with a good name for this geometry, so comment on the ideas you have. Maybe something with an X in the name? I ran what I'm calling the curl test on the OG spacer and booster spacer at 205C. OG on the left, new on the right. Note that these are speed, not volume. The OG nozzle maxed out at 950mm a minute with bad curling. The booster curled back less than the original even at 1100mm a minute. I made it all the way to 1300 millimeters a minute before it suddenly stripped. Somehow I lost the footage of the 1250 test, which looked about equivalent to the OG at 950. Finally, I ran a flow test on both spacers at 215 Celsius using Elugu White Rapid PLA and a shrunken flow test to make issues more obvious. The OG spacer started to warp seriously at 35 millimeters a second cubed and failed outright at 45. The booster started to warp seriously at 45 millimeters a second cubed and didn't fully fail until 57. Here's a chart showing the difference in flow. The OG spacer is in blue, the booster in red. The X geometry increased the warp-free flow by 50% and what I consider the acceptable warp flow by 44%. In theory, the smaller volume of melted plastic from the shorter melt zone should decrease the pressure advance value and make extrusion more accurate, but my printer is still Bowden and has a few loose tolerances, so it's hard to test it accurately. I'd also like to see how a higher quality manufactured version of this works compared to Mr. Jank, but I'll reserve those tests for a later video. Maybe sell them if they work out. I hope you enjoyed this. I look forward to sharing more updates, so if you want you could subscribe. Make sure you don't miss them. I'll be sharing a few other things that might be useful to the community later, so be sure to check back for that. Thanks for watching and let me know if you try this yourself.